Well, good evening, Empire Street. Um, I hope you're all keeping well. Um, we're seeing a bit of light at the end of the tunnel now. At least it seems that way. So hopefully we'll get back to some kind of normality sooner rather than later. Um, what do I want to talk about tonight? Um, if I was to give my little talk uh, a title, I think I would call it Bettering Ourselves. Bettering Ourselves. We, we have often heard it said that n nobody is perfect and um, that is, that's absolutely true, isn't it? I haven't met anybody perfect as, as yet. Someday I am going to meet somebody who's perfect, but that hasn't happened as, as yet. Um, I, don't, I don't know. When, when a young couple gets married, sometimes they, are, they think that they're marrying somebody who is absolutely perfect, but they don't have to live with that person very long before they realize that the person who they thought is perfect is, is not so perfect. And of course, they themselves is not, are, are not very uh, perfect. But, but guess what? Perfection um, is is something that we're not going to reach in in this li life, and if we confess that we are imperfect, then I want to say that we are in good company. I want to draw your attention to uh, a passage of scripture in the book of Philippines, chapter three, and verse twelve to the end of the chapter, and the man who is writing is the apostle Paul. And when I say that we're in good company, if we admit that we're not perfect, well, guess what? The Apostle Paul, he admitted to the fact that he was not perfect as well, that we're a good company. Paul said, I have not arrived as, as, yes, as yet. But guess what? Although Paul was not perfect, that didn't mean he didn't want to better himself. And... We know our shortcomings, etc., and and we should want to better ourselves. It was the um, great missionary Livingstone who was asked on one occasion, "Where do you want to go?" And he said, "Well, I'll go, I'll go anywhere as long as it's forward. I'll go anywhere as long as I am bettering myself." And really, basically, that's what I want to talk about how to better ourselves uh, in the Christian life. So uh, I'm going to look at this passage uh, of Scripture, and there's three principles I want to share with you if we want to better ourselves. First of all, we need to be single-minded. I want to read verse 12 to 14. Not that I have already obtained all this, or have already been made perfect, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. You know, if you think, and I'm sure I'm not speaking to anybody who does think this, but if you think that you've arrived in the Christian life, then you've got nothing to aim for. <laughs> um, if you think that you're perfect already, then, well, what have you got to aim for? You, what, what motivates you? Uh, but here the Apostle Paul says, I, I, I want to better myself, and this is how I do it. I'm going to be single-minded. Notice he, he says here, this one thing I do. And what does he say? What, what is this one thing that he does? In actual fact, it's in two parts. But he says this, forget what is behind I'm sure uh, that the Apostle Paul had the imagery of a, of a runner, of an, of an athlete. Uh, in fact, I'm, I'm, I'm convinced that uh, the Apostle would have been a man who would have liked to have 
sat in the crowd and watched athletes lift their weights and see them throwing their spears and, and running, etc. And this image of a, a, an athlete, I'm sure, was in the mind of the Apostle Paul. And he said, if you, if you want to run in this race, this imagery of the race, uh, the, the, the runner cannot always be looking over his shoulder. He's got to be focused. And in the, in the Christian life, and, not, and being in pastoral ministry for over 40 years, I've seen this so often, there are so many Christians who can't better themselves, who can't get on in the Christian life, because they're always looking over their shoulder. They are what I would describe as elephant Christians. And by that I don't mean elephant in the sense of size. But I mean elephant. An elephant is known as the animal that doesn't forget. Christians, some Christians I've met, have got elephant blood in their veins. They can't forget. And because they can't forget, they can't better themselves. They can't get on in their, in their walk with God. It could be some relational problem. It could be some sin that they committed. It, it, it could be this, it could be that, but they're always looking back. This one thing, if you want to better yourself, you've got to release yourself from the shackles of the past and get on with your life. So forget what is behind and then strain towards the goal. I'm, I'm sure, once again, going back to this imagery of the athlete, Paul was thinking about the athlete, how they strain for the finishing line. And, and this bettering ourselves, it's, it's, it's not just going to happen. It, it, it requires effort. Paul says here that he wanted to take hold of that for which Christ got hold of him. And when, when we came to faith, Jesus got a hold of our lives. And now, now we have to get hold of the reason for which Christ got hold of us. And he got hold of us so that we would serve him, know him, be like him. We need to go for gold. There used to be a television program, wasn't there? Going for gold. Don't be satisfied with bronze or silver. Go for gold. Strain towards the goal. Be single-minded. Forgetting what is behind all the rubbish of the past and, and straining towards the goal. So important if we're going to better ourselves in the Christian life. So, be single-minded. Secondly, if we want to better ourselves, I would encourage us to follow godly examples. Once again, back to the passage of Scripture that we're looking at, verse 15. All of us who are mature should take such a view of things. And if on some point you think differently, that too God will make clear to you. Only let us live up to what we have already attained. Join with others in following my example, brothers, and take note of those who live according to the pattern we gave you. For as I have told you before, and now I say again with tears, many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destiny is destruction. I, Paul doesn't mince his words here. Their destiny is destruction. Their God is their stomach, and their glory is in their shame. Their mind is on earthly things. So look, if we want to better ourselves, we, we need to be single-minded. But here's something else that we need to, to do as well. We, we need to follow godly examples. Now here Paul says, Follow me. In fact, if you go to the writings of the Apostle Paul, you'll, you'll, you'll discover that he, um, he, he used that expression uh, at least six times. Now, he, we would say, well, that's been a bit 
big headed, isn't it? Uh, imagine, um, imagine if my son was to get up in front of you some Sunday morning, or if I was, or some other preacher was to get up, and and was to say, "Now follow me." We would say, "Wow, that's being a bit conceited." But Paul, Paul wasn't being conceited. He he was he was just saying that my my life is exemplary, and and it's worth following. He wasn't being big-headed because he's already said he wasn't perfect. But he says, look, I, I do have a life that is worth duplicating. Follow me. I would say this. If we want to better ourselves. And this is what Paul is saying here. Is, he's saying this. Get along godly people. Follow godly examples. Spend time with people who are just a little bit further down the road than what you are. Learn from them. I, I have, um, over the years, read hundreds of books probably maybe even thousands I, I don't know but I've I've certainly read hundreds of books and I I I would encourage you to to read uh, Christian literature read your Bible as, as, especially that's that's important uh, get into God's Word uh, so important and and I'm thankful for the books that I've I've I've, I've read and they have enhanced my walk with the Lord but I want to share with you probably what has enhanced my walk with Jesus more than anything else. And it is this, godly examples. Rubbing shoulders with people who are just a little bit further on than what I am. I thank God for that. I can think of numerous examples that come to mind even as I sit, sit here and share this with you about people who have helped me. I think about Noel in, in Dublin's fair city. Uh, what, a, what a godly example he was and he was a man that had his fair share of problems and difficulties but yet he knew how to rejoice in the Lord in, in spite of that. Uh, maybe, am I speaking to some maybe married couple maybe you're you haven't been married that long and maybe you're having difficulties well get alongside a godly married couple who who've got a, an exemplary marriage and, and learn from them learn how you can be a better husband and a better wife a better parent learn follow godly examples we need to have a lifestyle that's worth duplicating. This, this comes as a challenge to us all, don't we? I hope that my lifestyle is worth duplicating. If you're having victory with getting, or problems with having victory over sin, then get alongside people who you know are godly and, and, and have fought the battles and won them. <clears throat> it's impossible I believe it's impossible to assess the power of a godly example. It's impossible to assess the power of a godly example. You see, in the church at um, Philippi, uh, there were there were two extremes. There was there was what people who would, I would call were there. They were the the legalists. They were saying, "Okay, you need to have Jesus." But in, in addition to that, we need to have everything that's associated with the law. So we have to have circumcision and food laws and the keeping of certain days, etc. They're, they're important as well. But so you, you need to avoid those type of people. And, and here Paul says there's another type of people that you need to avoid as well. And it's those who say, well, you know, you know, you can you can sin as much as you want because Jesus will always forgive you, and and they they propagated almost a, a theory which which said you know 
sin so that God's grace will come into action in your life. And the more you sin, more God's grace will abound. Unfortunately, the only exercise that some people take is when they jump to wrong conclusions when it comes to the subject of God's grace. God's grace in our lives is not an excuse for us to sin. In fact, it's the very opposite. So there's examples that we, people that we need to avoid. And there's people whose lifestyles we need to embrace. And Paul talks about it here, doesn't he? Only let us live up to what we have already obtained. And referring to this group of people, he says, their mind is on earthly things. Avoid them. But embrace godly examples. So, we need to be single-minded. Do you want to better yourself? Be single-minded. Do you want to better yourself? Follow godly examples. It'll, it'll cause you to better your, your life. The last thing is, remember your citizenship. Look what it says in verse 20. He says this, but our citizenship is in heaven and we eagerly await a savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly, lowly bodies so that they may be like his glorious body. Now, <clears throat> Remember your citizenship. Now this, what Paul says here, would have been quite meaningful to the Christians at, at Philippi. Because although they lived in Philippi, they were a Roman colony. They had been conquered by Rome and they, their, their citizenship really was in Rome, although they lived in Philippi. If you want to better your life as a Christian, then maybe sometimes we need to take stock and just remember our citizenship. Remember who we belong to. Now, if we, if we do manage to get a holiday this summer, um, maybe some of you is out there intending to go to sunny Spain or Portugal or or Greece, or something like that. I don't know. Maybe Florida. I, I, I don't know. You'll, you'll, take, you'll take your passport with you. Uh, and that port, passport will say that you're a citizen of the, of the United Kingdom. And, and as a citizen of the United Kingdom, whatever country you go to, you, you, want, you want to behave yourself. You, you, you don't want the Spanish or the French to think that the British are unruly or whatever. We, we are representatives of our country. Now as Christians, we're, we're citizens of two places. We're citizens of this country, but we're also citizens of heaven. That means that we march to a different drumbeat. That means that we better ourselves in this world because we realize that this world is really not our home. We're only passing through. We are to be like citizens of heaven. Think what heaven is like. Wow, well heaven, heaven is a holy place, isn't it? It's, it's an obedient place. It's, it's a wonderful place. And we are too, and when we think of ourselves that we are citizens of heaven, then that affects how we live our lives down here. When we realize that our citizenship is in heaven, then it should make us better our lives down here.
And what does Paul say here? And we eagerly await a Savior from there, from heaven. The Lord Jesus, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control, will transform our lowly bodies so that they may be like his glorious body. We're, we're waiting for a Savior from heaven. And Paul says here that when he comes, he's going to change our lowly bodies to, and they're going to be made like his glorious body. Guess what? I started my talk by saying that nobody is perfect, but guess what? There's going to be a day when we will be perfect. And this is the journey that we have to take until we get perfect. It's a journey where we endeavor to better ourselves. Friends, I, I want to be a better Christian. I want to be a better Christian. Be single-minded. That is so important. Follow godly examples. And remember your citizenship. Now, I just want to present you. Uh, the question I want to ask you is, is this. <clears throat> Does anybody come to mind in your life who has been a real example to you and who has helped you in your walk with Jesus. Talk amongst yourselves. Begin to share with others, people who inspired you. And if that person is sitting with you in the room, encourage them by saying, your life has been an example to me. So, is there ever, does anyone come to mind uh, who's been a, an example to you? And a verse of scripture to study in the light of what we're talking about, uh, improving our lives and eventually perfection. I'd like you to study Matthew chapter 5 and verse 48. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 48. Uh, it's been great to uh, share with you tonight. So remember, let's better ourselves in the days that lie ahead. The Lord bless you. Amen.